If you recall, we discussed the symmetry in the graphs for equations. There are three types of special symmetry. The graph could be symmetric with respect to the x-axis, it could be symmetric with respect to the y-axis, or it could be symmetric with respect to the origin. Now, since if a graph is symmetric with respect to the x-axis, it cannot pass the vertical line test. Therefore, this type of graph cannot represent a function. The other two types of graphs can both represent functions. So, if a function is symmetric with respect to the y-axis, then it is an even function. If the graph of the function is symmetric with respect to the origin, it is known as the odd function. Let's first look at even function. According to the definition, the graph of a function is the collection of all the solution points to this function. Therefore, at an arbitrary independent variable x, the y-coordinate must be the function value at x, which is fx. Also, another solution point at another independent variable value negative x must have the y-coordinate of f negative x. But because this graph is symmetric about the y-axis, then fx equals to f negative x. And that is a very important conclusion, and we're going to use this to determine if a function is an even function or not algebraically. For example, for the function y equals to fx equals to x squared, if we want to evaluate f negative x, we substitute in negative x, and we get x squared back, and this equals to fx. From this, we can tell that this function is an even function. Similarly, for an odd function, for a solution point and an arbitrary independent variable x, its y-coordinate must be fx, the function value at x. Also, for another solution point at independent variable negative x, its y-coordinate must be f negative x according to the definition of the function. But based on the symmetry, we can tell that f negative x equals to negative fx. And this is again another important conclusion for us to determine if a function is odd function or not algebraically. For example, for a function y equals to fx equals to 1 half x to the third power, if we want to evaluate this function at a negative x, we substitute it in f negative x equals to 1 half negative x to the third power, and this equals to negative 1 half x to the third power, which equals to negative fx. And this tells us this function is an odd function. So let's look at this example. We need to determine if this given function is even, odd, or neither algebraically without using a graph. For this type of problem, the strategy will be simply to evaluate f negative x and see if it equals to fx, negative fx, or neither. In the first case, that will be an even function. The second case, it will be an odd function. And the last case, it will be neither. So to evaluate f negative x, we simply substitute all the x with negative x, and then rearrange. And this equals to negative square root of x squared minus 1 times x, and that is negative fx. And that tells us this function is an odd function. The zeros of a function is defined as the independent variable values, in this case, x values, that will make this function equal to zero. So the procedure to determine the zeros of the function is quite simple. For example, for this function, to find its zeros, we simply set it to be zero, and then solve the equation for x. Therefore, x to the third power minus one equals to zero, and x equals to one and that is the zero for this function. Let's look at another example. This is a g function as a function of t. 
To find the zeros for this function, again, we simply set it to be zero, and then solve the equation for t. This is a quadratic equation, and we learned how to factorize it. And then the solutions will be t equals to either 4 or negative 1, and both of them are zeros for this function. For the graph of a function, if you recall, we learned about the x-intercepts, which are points where the function graph intercepts with the x-axis. And these points will always have y-coordinates of 0, which indicates a function value of 0. Therefore, naturally, on the graph, zeros for the function correspond to the x-coordinates of the x-intercepts. In this case, x1 and x2 are the zeros for this function.